They're, they're conditioned to walk a very tight rope when it comes to masculinity and talking about self love is not on that rope. <laughs> and um, any kind of, you know, you can boast about your accomplishments, you can boast about your stats, your sports stats, you can boast about how much money you make. But if you talk about you as a person, now you a simp, now it's you're soft, now it's, oh, you're a wimp, now you're a loser, whatever. But having that sense of self and having that admiration for self in a healthy way it's important for anybody regardless of gender. I just find that self-love, is, it tends to be a conversation that women have amongst themselves and that men should be having but aren't having enough of. And I think that sometimes the reason why men are absent is because they don't like themselves and they have a hard time feeling as though they're worth being known by their kids. And that isn't to excuse their absence, because I mean, that's you know, not an excuse, but I don't think, I, I have a hard time believing that somebody who has high self-esteem and who loves themselves would have been in their kids. What's up, Brave Hearts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach, back with another segment of It's Scary to Remarry, wanting you to love fearlessly. We are in our Father's Day series, A Daughter's Perspective. This has been a phenomenal series so far, so we're just going to keep this episode rolling because it has been gotten great feedback so far so today you are in for a treat this is our first time guest and i'm pretty sure this is not going to be her last time i guess i'm already kind of wanting her to come back already brave hearts <laughs> community let's welcome cindy how are you doing this evening cindy i'm so good thank you so much for having me i'm very very excited to get into today's topic because it should be very interesting so, yeah, I'm very happy to be here. Yes, for sure. And for those who might not know, uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Absolutely. So I am a personal development speaker, public speaker. So it's really important to me that I talk about different life experiences we have and how to better navigate those experiences. I'm also a content creator on social media. You can find me on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, a little bit of everything. And I also have my own podcast called Can We Talk About It? But it's just really important that we talk to me, that we talk about life and the life experiences that tend to be overshadowed and not talked about enough. And that's what I like to do. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. And your YouTube channel is off the chain. I was like, <laughs> I love it. That's Thank you. That's Thank amazing. you. I appreciate it. I talk about a lot now, but I definitely enjoy getting my thoughts out there and just opening, creating safe spaces for open dialogue is my thing. So, yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, we're going <laughs> to talk about that as well. Let's jump into today's topic because I want to honor your time. We're talking about Father's Day. So uh, can you spare, uh, can you share with us a special memory you have with your father? My first daddy-daughter dance. Um, my dad and I went together and I had gotten all dolled up. I got my hair done. I had a really cute dress on and he was in this nice little suit. And we went, it was uh, my school put on the daddy daughter dance and we went and we had the food. We had the little cute little plates with the, with the utensils and everything all laid out professional and fancy and such. And we danced on the dance floor. It was a very, very, very sweet night. Very cute night. Um, and I think that's probably one of my favorite memories of my dad, me and my dad together, for sure. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Around what, what grade were you in? What? Oh, I had to have been like second, first, second grade. I was very young. So I would say like between six and eight, that mm -hmm. age range. So I was very young. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So how has your relationship with your father evolved over the years? Well, um, my parents divorced when I was six and my dad and I were pretty close up until that point. But through the divorce, my, my father and I kind of became estranged and our relationship definitely took a hit through the divorce and we became more distant. Um, and throughout my adolescence, he and I were distant. He and I were very off and on. And so I essentially grew up with an absent father. Um, he was more of a, I would say more of an inconsistent father. He was around, but he wasn't around consistently. And so it definitely created a lot of inner turmoil for me as a child going through that. But then he and I were estranged for, um, throughout my adolescence, but then in 2020, when the, when the pandemic hit, 
it really kind of put a lot of things in perspective for the two of us. And we decided to just kind of talk things out, hash things out and reconcile. And he and I have had a healthy daddy daughter relationship ever since this 2020. So it's been about four years now that we've actually had a healthy experience of being together and being in community with one another that I haven't had prior to. So it's definitely been a very interesting uh, development of our relationship, to say the least, for sure. And so how did that make you feel after kind of, you know, getting that relationship back together? Like, what, what were your thoughts? What were going through your mind at that time? I would say it. Are you a content creator, YouTuber? Maybe you've interviewed someone on your video podcast and they said something that was really, really good. Or maybe you said something that was really, really good. Well, enter Opus Clips. This is the platform that I use when I want to share 30 to 60 second video clips that I can share with the whole world. I mean, you can share those clips on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram Reels, like these 30 to 60 second clips that Opus Clips can give to you with the click of a mouse. All you have to do is upload the recording and boom, Opus Clips within maybe 10 minutes will give you 15 to 25 different clips with description on the side of the video. And it also gives you like a title and it gives you a rating and let you know how powerful that clip can be used on social media from a rating of 99 all the way down to maybe 60. This is a phenomenal platform that has took my social media marketing to another level. If you want to level up your social media game, go in the description below right now and get the link for Opus Clips. This will not disappoint you. Reconciling with my father wasn't an experience that I thought would happen. I thought that mm -hmm. he and I would be estranged forever. He and I would have a strained relationship forever. And so um, when he and I actually began working on things and I was able to tell him how I felt about things I've been wanting to say for so long and all of that, I really thought that hearing, being able to say how I feel or hearing the apologies would like erase the emotional imprint that it left when it initially happened. And I learned the hard way that you can hear the right things, but for some things what's done is done. And the damage is done, it's done. And, and, and hearing that person who caused those issues finally be held accountable and finally say all those right things you're waiting to hear doesn't eradicate the work you have to do to overcome what happened. And so I was definitely hit with a harsh reality of reconciling with your father or your parent doesn't erase what y'all being estranged or being strange did and estranged did. And you have to erase that yourself. So it was a very shock. I felt very shocked to mm -hmm. reconcile with him and realize that I still had daddy issues that I developed as a child. So uh, shocked, confused, and of course, grateful for the for experience, but also like I thought it would be a lot quote unquote, more than what it ended up being. I thought that it was going to cure a lot more than what it ended up curing. Now, I, once I got on board and began doing my work, things of course improved too, but the initial reaction was like oh so i still gotta do work too like i thought this was he said he was sorry i thought i was done so like to realize that like you can hear those words and it's still not fix things was a very shocking thing for me to realize mm. that's mm -hmm. wow that's powerful because i i believe and correct me if i'm wrong i think a lot of us think like that like absolutely like you get the apology Especially with our parents, we we, we tend to like, because I know when I, when he and I were estranged, um, I was really angry a lot and I was really frustrated that like he didn't get it. And it was really, I, I would like fantasize over being able to tell him off and tell him all the ways he did me wrong. And like, no, I didn't tell him off in real life, but I got a chance to communicate the ways in which I was hurt by him. Thinking that like, yes, finally he'll get, he'll get it. He'll get how much he hurt me and he'll get it. And he got it and he apologized and life went on and I still had those issues I had to overcome internally. So it just made me realize like, I think we do rely way a lot more on other people's actions to cure us and don't realize that a lot of times we're the ones holding ourselves back after a while. So 
yes, they might have done the initial damage, but they're they've since stopped, and now it's us repeating the damage. And so, yeah, I think that's a very common thing that we do. We tend to expect for us holding them accountable to cure the remnants of what their actions did for us, and it doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is so powerful. And I had to learn that the hard way uh, mm -hmm. myself because my dad, he had uh, he had two strokes. Mm -hmm. And I remember the second one he had. I was I went to go visit him in the hospital. Mm -hmm. He was at a place where he 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 couldn't talk, mm -hmm. you know, so I was talking to him, whatever. But I was looking for an apology. Right. Mm -hmm. Looking for an apology. And mm -hmm. I got that same revelation, like, oh, so what happens when they can't talk or mm -hmm. whatever the situation, or you're looking for that, that, that validation or, you know, and you thinking it's all good and it's not, you like, mm -hmm. oh, now nah, I'm stuck with this that I have mm -hmm. to deal with, mm -hmm. you know, and if I don't. It is a definite, it, there is a resentful feeling. There is, there was definitely a resentful feeling of like, you mean to tell me you the one that did it and I'm stuck. With the effects of it, you get to just come back and say, I'm sorry, and you moved on, and I'm still stuck here. There was definitely a frustrating feeling of like, I got to do the work to fix it, but I wasn't the one that broke it. You know, that there, there's, there's that definite frustration of like, I finally get the chance, I finally have this, and I did it, and it still isn't what I thought it'd be. So, yeah, I, there, I learned through that situation that closure isn't always what you think it's supposed to be. And I think closure is more about finding closure within yourself than it is about seeking it from somebody else. Because like you said, you know, you'll get a situation where you're with someone and you finally have the chance, but that chance may not pan out how you've been imagining for it to pan out this entire time. Then what, you know? So, I mean, at least I, the way I see it is at least you got a chance to tell him how you felt, even though he wasn't able to respond properly, at least you were able to express yourself. And I think that's powerful too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a lot of people don't, don't mm -hmm. get the opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people don't get it. <sighs> yeah, that's that's an episode within itself. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, considering that, you know, you have the relationship with your dad now and it's mm -hmm. been going on for years um, and even just throughout your life, what life lessons has your father taught you that you still carry with you today? Interesting. Uh, I'm going to go from shallow to more in-depth. Shallow, he taught me how to play spades. And I definitely, I want to credit him for that because I am lethal when it comes to playing spades to this day. So I always have to shout him out for that because he put me on game and he really sat me down and taught me like the psychology behind spades and how to get in your opponent's head for real. So I have to give him his, you know, props for that. But on a more... um in-depth and intimate way of looking at it. My dad has taught me self-confidence in a different way and taught, taught me that the way that you view yourself and the way that you treat yourself takes precedence and will impact how you show up for everybody else. There's no way that you can treat yourself poorly and then show up for somebody else and fully excel in treating them properly. At some point, how you treat you is going to impact how you treat others. And I think that's a lesson that I carry with me to this day because it's like, you really can't pour from an empty cup. And if you are pouring from an empty cup, well, that what you're pouring tends to have strings attached and expectations attached to it in a way that you wouldn't have if you were actually pouring into yourself too. So I think my dad has definitely taught me that how you feel about yourself sets up how you feel about the world. And uh, he demonstrates that in a way that I haven't seen with other people. So yeah, I would have, I would have, to, I'd have to I'd have to give them that that those props too. So yeah, yeah that's what mm. I would say. Mm. That's good because we yeah. had yeah because everything starts within, right? Mm -hmm. We think mm -hmm. that you know if we can get this seek this outside validation, it'll make us better, but it doesn't. It, and sometimes it makes you feel worse. So mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah right and there's nothing like being trapped in your own body where you're mm -hmm. you know you're not feeling like you're at 100 percent mentally or or mm -hmm. you have this negative self-talk or all these different mm -hmm. things or you have abandonment issues and just all these different things like you can be trapped in your own body and you can't expect for that uh validation of outside it has to start inside so absolutely absolutely yeah what qualities do you admire most about your father 
I get my sense of humor from my dad. My dad is very quick witted and I get that from him too. So I, I admire that about him because we tend to relate in that way. My dad is also very confident in himself and his abilities. Um, especially like his appearance, physical appearance, all that. He's very confident in himself. So I've I've taken notes to be to have more pride in who I am based off of the pride he has within himself. I think that's something that's very important for kids to see is there is both parents especially, but something about seeing your father be confident in himself, it kind of makes you straighten up in your seat and it makes you want to like let me let me get myself together because if he feels that good about himself and I'm half of him, why should I feel any less than how he feels, you know? So seeing my dad uh talk highly of himself has definitely I think that's a good quality of his too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah, my dad, he he was he was always clean. I mean, he <laughs> he had on suits. He my dad stayed clean like <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. all that is so but that's that's intentionality and that's prioritizing yourself and I think that's a very important quality to notice so yeah I think yeah pops, pops being Gucci down to the socks I think that's <laughs> phenomenal to watch absolutely <laughs> oh yeah for sure so what is the most valuable piece of advice your father has given you mm. I got to think about that one. Um, we got time. <laughs> <laughs> kind, of, kind of piggybacking off of what I said before, I think the most valuable piece of advice that my dad has given um, is to love yourself mm -hmm. and also to not rush, to not rush life, to let things happen as they go. My dad is really big on like, Y'all settle down and have kids when you feel ready. Don't rush that process. I think that's really important to hear when life is telling you to settle down when you get to a certain age, when you get older and your friends are settling down and such. So I, I appreciate that my dad is like, you know, don't rush that. Take your time with that. Um, oh, what was the other thing I said? I said that. And what was the other thing I just said? And you said about a confidence. Oh, uh, that was that was something else. That, what was the question again? I'm sorry. It was, uh, what is the most valuable piece of advice your father love had? Love yourself. Given? Yeah. Yeah. Piggybacking off the last thing, love yourself. Um, I think that's valuable because we don't often hear men talk about self-love. Mm. You know, in honor of also being Mental Health Awareness Month for men, I think that it's it's not often that we hear men talk about, we, we hear men boast and brag, but we don't hear them talking about like honoring yourself and recognizing yourself and loving what you who you are where you are no matter where you are mm -hmm. i think it's a very vulnerable piece of advice he's given me of like you gotta love yourself you have to be able to accept who you are in your totality in order to really um be able to show up in the world properly and so even though it's a simple phrase i find it to be very profound once you kind of look behind the surface of it and just saying like you gotta love yourself you have to be able to no matter what like what you see in the mirror and i think that's very important in life is is when you don't like what you see in the mirror it warps your entire world view very easily and so i i appreciate the uh simple yet profound advice of love yourself because it is there's a lot there's a lot a lot that goes into what he's saying in a very simple phrase mm -hmm. so yeah mm -hmm. oh wow you just said something about about men being uh uh, uh talking about self-love yeah, that's that's deep. Mm -hmm. you know, we don't see it much. I mean, men they're they're conditioned to walk a very tight rope when it comes to masculinity, and talking about self love is not on that rope. <laughs> and um, any kind of you know, you can boast about your accomplishments, you can boast about your stats, your sports stats, you can boast about how much money you make. But if you talk about you as a person, now you a simp. Now it's you're soft. Now it's oh you're a wimp. Now you're a loser. Whatever. But having that sense of self and having that admiration for self in a healthy way is important for anybody regardless of gender. I just find that self-love, is it tends to be a conversation that women have amongst themselves and that men should be having but are having enough of. Mm, yeah, that's you hit the nail on the head. You're right. We don't talk about, especially for men, because honestly, for myself, I think I really didn't fully like fall in love with myself until after my divorce. Like the first time mm -hmm. when I was married, uh, mm -hmm. I was married almost 
16, 15, 16 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't, because then I realized like, oh, now I'm, I'm by myself now. Like, who am I outside of my ex? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And had to do figuring, some Especially things. figuring yourself out through different stages of life. That's, that's, that can be difficult, especially when you're in a stage of life where life is just kind of throwing the curveballs at you. So I'm sure after your divorce, it was hard. How were you able to get back to yourself after such a turbulent time such as divorce? A lot of crying, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of self-reflection, mm -hmm. um, just getting to spend some time with myself. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I remarried. I, I met my wife on Instagram, remarried. We, you know, oh, did the long distance thing. Yeah. So, uh, but I think it was just spending some time with yourself, like mm -hmm. having a, a, a quiet house, like the house is mm -hmm. quiet, you know, <laughs> um, and, you know, and raising my daughter and stuff because we had a daughter together. So, because mm -hmm. I'm real simple, like I'm very simple. Uh, I just like to have peace. I, you know, I, I love podcasts and I love creating content like that. Mm -hmm. So my mind is always racing. But at the same time, when I'm doing stuff like this, I feel like I'm in my element. I feel like this is what I was called to do. So mm -hmm. I'm real simple. I just, I love people. Um, but sometimes I could be very introverted where I just like to sit on the couch and not be balanced. You should. <laughs> balance. You need balance. You know, nothing wrong with that. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, journaling. Mm -hmm. Um a lot of that uh, exercise, just real basic stuff that I think that we take for granted. Mm -hmm. um, silence is very important. Mm -hmm. um, for some people, silence might be too loud. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I find that a lot of men, from my experience, don't do well with silence. Yeah. They have a hard time being in it's just and being still. It's not always easy for them. And that's a very important, being mindful and being present in the moment is a very important thing for me too. So yeah, I get that. Yes, it's tough though. Mm -hmm. I, I I I wrestle with that sometimes still to this day about mm -hmm. sitting. It's like if, if everything is like super chill, I'm like, wait a minute, something is I'm I'm not doing <laughs> something. Can't be. Like, yeah, like something is <laughs> off, you know. <laughs> so uh, I still wrestle with that at times. Um so can you share a time when your father supported you during a challenging moment in your life? Well, uh, 2020, actually. So right after he and I rekindled things, I ended up having to move in with him and his family. Um, I had nowhere else to stay. And it was just, they, he took me in with open arms. I stayed with him for close to a year before I moved uh, to Texas. But um, he was very supportive in that time. He was definitely, he gave me roof over my head. And it gave me the space to kind of figure out my life and what I wanted to do with it. And I really appreciated that time because, I mean, in your 20s and figuring out life in your 20s, it's like, am I doing the right thing? Am I not? What's the next step? I don't know. There's just a lot of, there's a lot of uncertainty in that. And being able to have a space where I could just be for a little bit and not have to have the answers per se right now gave me the freedom to just explore more of what I wanted in life. And I really appreciated that. And that was the most important thing he could have done because I just needed a safe space to just be and figure out what that looks like for me. Um, but my dad's supportive in general. Um, anything that I do when I tell him and I let him know about it, he's excited for me, happy for me and proud of me. So I think he's just, he's very supportive in general. But just in that moment, when I was in a crunch, she was there for me and then definitely helped me out in a time of need. So that was much appreciated. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that had to be, yeah. Y'all had some interesting conversations, huh? Oh, yeah. That was my first time living with him long term like that since my parents had divorced. So, I mean, we had a lot of years to catch up on and we did. We definitely bonded over the time that I was here. Um, got along got to be able to reminisce on memories that I had as a kid and memories that he had and things of that nature. So it was a great time. I, I had, yeah, I had a great experience here when I was, when I was here. Yeah. Yeah. That is wow. <laughs> that's that, that's cool too. Yeah. So do you feel like you, do you feel like you understand, even though maybe he was out of your life for, you know, a certain amount of time, mm -hmm. I don't know the timeline, but do you feel like you maybe understand maybe why have y'all had that conversation like maybe why yes. he there? Yeah. um 
I and whatever you feel comfortable with sharing. No, no, oh, pressure. no, you're fine. Yeah, you're fine. I under so it's interesting. Um, I will say yes and no, but what I mean by that is logically, yes, I understand. He and I have talked about where he was in his life when he became a father, and my parents had me like in their early 20s or so. So, I mean, like at, at 28 now, babes. <laughs> I can't imagine having a child now, much less the age my parents were. So I just naturally getting older gave both my parents grace of like, you know what, y'all did the best y'all could because I couldn't fathom. So there was just, there was that natural grace applied of just aging. But in talking to my dad and just getting to hear his side of things and understanding that he just wasn't at a place where he felt confident himself enough and his abilities enough to be the kind of dad that he thought that you know we deserved, I understand it logically. But I think there will always be the little girl in me that's like, so? Yeah. yeah, <laughs> right? yeah. And my problem, I didn't ask yeah. to be here. You know, that, that, I think that part of me will always kind of be there. But I've learned to kind of let her have the power of a whisper. You know, she's not overpowering my mental anymore. She used to be very controlling. She used to, that little girl inside of me used to be very, she used to run the show. Mm. But now it's like, I've made peace with the fact that, um, he did the best thing he could at the, at that time. And unfortunately, my child brain didn't understand the world view of things. So I, mean, I think sometimes, especially as kids, we internalize things so easily. Everything's our fault. If it rains outside, it's supposed to be funny. It's because I sneeze outside at some point. You know, we, we internalize things so quickly as kids to be our fault that as a child, we're not hearing it's not about you, but sometimes it really isn't about you. And it's unfortunate that you're caught in the crossfire, but sometimes to have that person around when they're in a state where they don't feel their best, that isn't the answer. So I understand at this age that he did the best that he could with where he was at that time. And I appreciate that that was his answer. I would rather him have gotten out of the way and not quote unquote cause more damage mm -hmm. um if he weren't around and didn't feel good enough to be around. So yes, at this age, I can definitely say that like I get it. I respect it. I understand it. But there will always be that child, inner child of me that's like, I don't care that I get it. You should have been you should have been gone to some read a book, done something to fix it, you know. Mm -hmm. So but that's I, I learned to accept that part of me too and just recognize that I don't think that part will ever change. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to make a change either. So that's yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I hear you. And, and you said something that was interesting because I heard this uh from you know, just kind of like online chatter. I hear mm -hmm. a lot of guys say this and even some women that the reason some men abandon their kids is because they feel like they are in a certain place in their life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, and to me, that's new. That's like new news to me. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm 47, but it's just like, I never, I never looked at, even in my struggle years, I never looked at me as, Oh, I, I'm not the man that I need to be right now. I'm like, no, I just need to be present regardless of what's going on. Interesting. See, at, at my age, I feel like I'm not ready to be a parent. So I'm not doing anything to make that a reality, right? But I think that's the part of me that the inner child, the little girl, I mean, that's like, I don't care, mm -hmm. is because my understanding kind of stops when it's like, so you're consciously aware that you, if given the opportunity to be a parent, wouldn't be able to show up and be a parent. So then why are we doing things to increase the chance of you being a parent? And that's where my empathy kind of stops because if you know that you lack the qualities needed to show up and be that, that kind of person for somebody who didn't ask to be here, why are we entertaining situations? And why are we also on our own, you know, what's the word I'm looking for in our own way, making that situation more probable to have kids. That's where they lose me. And it's like, you can't, that can't be the excuse when you're moving so boldly in the bedroom. So who you preaching? That is where, that's where my empathy kind of stops. Cause it's like, okay, we're all different parts of our life path. But if you feel like you're not mentally, emotionally, financially in a place where you should be being one's father, we shouldn't be doing anything to provoke father fatherhood. You know, we should keep that keep that on the wraps. And I think that's where men lose me. I do my best to empathize and understand, but that 
dissonance of cognitive ability is where I, like, it was where they lose me every time. Yeah. But no, that's real. I, I, I'm with you a thousand percent. You know, I, <laughs> I feel like too many of our young men are they they know how to be lovers before providers right mm -hmm. like they're you know and not even providers much partners they, they're, they're they're more it's more about being lovers and just being an equal present person in this bond or union or whatever we have i think that so often we we box men into the provider role but i think the tide is turning of women saying i don't need you to 100 percent provide financially i need you to be emotionally and mentally present too and i think Men are men are showing up financially more than they show up mentally and emotionally, but that's needed. Like, yes, money, okay, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. But the mental and emotional presence is invaluable. And I think that is what I remember as a kid. Like, I don't care if we go to the mall and spend money on clothes and shoes. I want to be around my dad. I yeah. don't care about that. But, like, because men are conditioned to believe that their value is solely in monetary value, they miss out on so many other places of value that they can offer their children and create such good experiences with their kids. So they focus on that one aspect that they might not be you know, reaching at that point. So I don't know. I, I get it, but it's also like you have value <laughs> elsewhere and your refusal to look at those other places of value is hindering not just you, but your child too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause that's a, that's a whole conversation piece and there was a uh there was a not to get too far off track but we hear it's just like uh, <laughs> uh, there was a lady uh, i was watching this show one day and she said why would you lay with a man that you don't want your child to emulate mm -hmm. and i was just like wow and it it, it went crazy on my timeline you know and i was just mm -hmm. so many people talked about it had so many different perspectives and again i never looked at my life as something that i, I don't know i just i never could just see myself away from my kids and you know mm -hmm. i have i have a blended family um so i know how that work i did it in my in my first marriage i did it in, in this time around so i mm -hmm. but a lot of times men do look at oh i gave you some money he should be good in his deep. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you know, so when when I hear a single mom say things like um, th that money, you know, your child needs you or mm -hmm. he would like to see you at the basketball game or just stuff like that. I'm like, I feel that that's real mm -hmm. because the kids, they just want your time. Yeah. You know, they just want you. But I think mm -hmm. that 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 leads to. And this might be off track, I don't know, but I think a lot of men struggle with self-love and self-value and self-esteem. And I think that sometimes the reason why men are absent is because they don't like themselves and they have a hard time feeling as though they're worth being known by their kids. And that isn't to excuse their absence, because I mean, that's you know, not an excuse, but I don't think, I, I have a hard time believing that somebody who has high self-esteem and who loves themselves would have been in their kids. You know, I think that we tend to just look at the act of abandoning children and, and chastise and scold it. And I get it. But we have to also look at, like, what kind of person would rationalize that behavior? What's happening within them for them to think that that's OK behavior? And I just I think that I have a hard time believing in somebody with high self-esteem who actually enjoys and accepts themselves is moving that way. Mm. Yeah. I, I never understood. I never understood how and this isn't to shame or bash anybody who's watching or listening. I just never understood a man not taking care of his child. I just I, I think need. it's a, I think it's a very twisted form of self-hate, not to be dramatic. But if your child is a manifestation of you, that's a product of who you are. If you don't like yourself, how can you like the product? And I'm not saying that to put children down i'm just saying from the same point of someone who is struggling with how they do themselves i can see how they would also struggle with how they do their kids because that's an extension of who they are so i think that men who behave i think a lot of men i don't find confident men often i, I don't come across many men who seem secure in themselves and who seem to like themselves mm -hmm. More times than not, I come across men who don't like themselves, but are trying to pretend as if they do. And I think mm. that 
behind that boasting and fragile ego is a boy who feels inadequate. I think a lot of men just feel inadequate due to their personal childhood experiences with their parents or their own securities where they feel inadequate in, in fatherhood and they just opt out. Not an excuse per, by any means, but I think what we are seeing is a huge issue of men's lack of self-trust and self-esteem. Mm. Well, what do you think are some factors that causes a man to have low self-esteem and from your perspective? Definitely not having their own father in the home. I think I think what we're seeing is also a lot of repeated behavior, what they grew up seeing, and they're just kind of repeating the same thing. Um, but also how men are conditioned to be men. So much of parenthood is vulnerability, it's honesty, it's softness, it's patience, it's kindness. And those are all qualities that are deemed gay if you're a man doing it. <laughs> and so yep. there is a... To be an active, present dad, you have to push out what you've been taught, the archaic belief of what it is to be a man. Because, you know, active dads, they do take part of their daughters. They're the ones who let their daughters paint their nails and, and play dress up with them and things like that, you know. But, like, if you're so worried about being gay, you're not doing that. Mm -hmm. And you're blocking a chance for you to play with your child in, in the process of that. So I think a lot of men's fear of not being seen as masculine or as a man also stands and provides a blockage between their bond with, between um, father and child. But I also think what we have set men up to think, or, or what we have to, to, to find a successful man to be is a man who has a family, but isn't active in the family. Mm -hmm. He's the man who is going to work, paying the bills and going golfing with his buddies on the weekend while his mom, while his wife and mom take care of the kids, you know, that's the standard of what it means to be a successful man. So all around, we're not seeing, we're, we're not advertising present fatherhood mm. in more ways than one. So it, it, it's not a cool thing. It's cool to be a Debbie dad. It's cool to be an active. It's cool to be inconsistent. It's not cool to be a present dad. It's not cool to be there every day, you know? So I think the issue is so much bigger than just Growing up without a dad in the home, I think it's a systemic way that men are socialized of what it means to be men that results in an overall inactivity and fatherhood as well. Mm. Wow, this is, <laughs> this is this is so good. <laughs> OK, my mind is going there now. I have to ask you this. I, Lord, I have to ask you this. Go ahead. How do you feel? And if you've seen this. What do you say to women who are in relationships with men who don't take care of their kids but take care of her kids side eye you're not a girl's girl at all i think that it is um very odd to what do i want to say <laughs> you, you um, can say it we good I think my issue with women who are like that is that you are here to win at the expense of children. And I mm -hmm. find that to be very odd. You, any woman who could be with a man who is an active deadbeat to his children, but being a present child, a present father to her kids, especially if they aren't his kids biologically, mm -hmm. for you to watch her, to watch him do that and stay says so much about your character as a woman. Because, yes, he's already a culprit for behaving this way, but for him to behave this way in front of you and you not only condone it, but you promote it by remaining in access to him and in connection with him, you're here to win. You're here to be the one that he chooses over his ex. You're looking at it from an ex standpoint and not from a standpoint of he is not providing for his children, you know, and I think that it's a very petty very, very petty thing to um, view as a, a consolation prize. And I also feel like in today's day and age, women who buy into the, she will let me see my kids narrative. Mm -hmm. Girl, come on. Uh, I find that that to me is a very, if a woman believes that you just wanted to believe it, you didn't press, you didn't, that that narration is so rare in my opinion at this point. The amount of women who actually are just trying their hardest to keep this man away, few far in between. Nine times out of ten, there's more to that story. And 
uh, I guess as a as a woman who grew up without my father initially, I do show more hesitancy in that statement of, or my kids don't want to be around me. Why not? That's not normal. That the, the, like that's not that's not normal behavior. And so, women who um, date, marry, and are with men who are actively not being active parents, I do side eye and I, I do question like what are your morals and what are your values, and are you with him thinking that he would never do that to you and your kids? Because I mm -hmm. hate to break it to you, girl, but he's showing you a pattern, you know. But I think that a lot of women, the same way that men are conditioned on what it means to be a man. Women are conditioned that a lot of us are conditioned to believe that women are competition and that we have to win and that we tend to go into connections trying to win over another woman. Where and so there are women out here who pursue women or pursue men who have kids because they're trying to be the one that he chooses over his child's mother. And I just find that to be such a waste of everyone's time. <laughs> wow. But, um, okay, that's heavy. It is heavy. And I think that there are women out here who not only have a, com a competitive sphere, but are also jealous of other women and want to be the one that he changes for or that he mm -hmm. acts right for. Um, so I think that's what tends to happen there. And it just isn't a good look regardless. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's good. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's get back to the episode. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Um, what role has your father played in shaping your views on family and relationships? Um, <laughs> respectfully, he has shifted my view. Ooh. <laughs> I don't want to say it. <laughs> my dad has shown me what not to do. Mm -hmm. Um, when it comes to how I show up with my kids whenever I have kids, but also who I choose and partner. Um, there are traits that due to what I experienced with him, I know to look out for, for my own safety, for my kids' safety. Um, but I think that my dad, my dad, but my, he showed me things not to do, but he also has shown me things to do. So it's kind of a balance. I feel like when it comes to family and relationships, he's also shown me, um, how to let people go when it's time to let them go. I think he has definitely demonstrated that, you know, all family that you, when your family you're born into doesn't always necessarily mean family. And if you find yourself around people who you feel are doing you a disservice, it's time to just pull back gracefully. It doesn't have to be beef. It doesn't have to be messy. It doesn't have to be dramatic, but you mm -hmm. don't, you do have the power and the right to remove yourself when need be. So I think I would say those things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. That's good. If you could say one thing to your father right now, what would it be if he was watching this? Uh, of course, I love him. <laughs> um, but also, I really appreciate him for, I feel like I'm his mini me. So I guess I appreciate him for being the blueprint and for being the person that I get to emulate in a way. Um I think that's what I would say, though. Yeah, yeah that's what I would yeah. say. <laughs> for sure, for sure. And as we prepare to end this episode, because the time is flying by, describe him. <laughs> in, describe him in one word. One word. Mm -hmm. I would have to use charismatic. Mm. My dad is very charismatic and has a great personality. And could make anybody smile or laugh. So I think, yeah, charismatic. Yep. Yeah. I'll say that. <laughs> For Absolutely. sure. Oh my God. This. See, I knew this was going to happen when we started recording, <laughs> and I'm all for it. Everything that I was hoping Last for. Came yeah. Absolutely. This... Thank you so much for having me again. This has been a phenomenal episode. Let everyone know how they can get in touch with you. I'll have everything linked up in the description. Yes. But give us all your good stuff. Me, that you um, Y'all can follow me across social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, at the Cindy, C-I-N-D-Y, Noir, N-O-I-R. And on YouTube, you can either try that at or can we talk about it? Either one should pop up just fine. Uh, but yeah, I'm all over socials. Do be sure to follow me. Yeah, check me out. Yes. 
for sure. Brave Hearts community, you heard it here. Make sure you go connect with Cindy. She has phenomenal content. Uh, I follow <laughs> her you. on Twitter. Uh, I subscribe to the channel. I believe I'm subscribed to the channel. Um, and, and just all the great stuff that you have going on. I think you have like a Thank journal you. and stuff. Or Yes, I have yes. a journal. Um, I have a journal about celibacy. So if you need something to kind of help you along your personal celibacy or abstaining journey, I got you for that. And I'm currently also writing a couple of books too. So I have things in the works mm -hmm. I'm coming out with, but yeah, that's what I have so far. Oh, I have to bring you back so you can talk about that journal. Sure. I'd love to. I'd love to. Okay. It's a great topic to talk about. So we have to, we have to guess, bring this back. We can do it again. Yeah. Yes, for sure. Okay, so three out of four, out of four, out of my four guests, three of y'all decided to come back. So we do, we, <laughs> we're know, doing we pretty good. <laughs> okay, awesome. awesome, awesome. Well, Brave Hearts community, you heard it here. Make sure you go connect with Cindy. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Uh, subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to her channel so you can have great content Absolutely. up and down your your timeline. Uh, and also make sure you pick up her products and stuff as well. And she's going to come back. So you don't want to miss that episode either. If you are listening to this via podcast, make sure you hit the subscribe button as well. Leave a rating and review. We'd love to hear from you. By doing so, we'll put you in a drawing for a free Amazon gift card. Who doesn't like free stuff? <laughs> this is Sean Heineman with special guest Cindy Noir. And we are out. <laughs> <laughs>